Hello and welcome to the shed. In today's video, following on from last week's tray video where we did the rebated tray on the main frame and then nailed the bottom one, today we're going to be doing rebates once again, but we're going to be doing a captive groove to hold the bottom of this particular tray that we're going to make. Today I'm using 18mm pine. I've already got these pieces ready to go, so we'll be jumping straight into doing the rebates in this particular video just to speed that process up. We will once again be using some plywood for the base. This is 7mm ply, which means we're going to have a groove that's roughly 7mm wide. So once again, I will leave a list of all the tools and try and leave it in the video this time. We're going to be using, obviously, some marking gauges straight up to mark our rebates. So one one of our marking gauge sizes is going to be the full thickness of the side piece, which is the full 18 millimeters. And we're going to go a third of that thickness, which is the standard uh, amount that we do for rebates and grooves. So we're going to go with six millimeters here. So we're going to have a, a 18 millimeter wide rebate that is six millimeters deep. So once again, we will be doing the rebates into the side stretches, the long stretches, to simplify the build it's a little bit easier doing that way and then you can just cut your side pieces to fit inside and <clears throat> take off that 12 millimeters in this case and that will give you your overall size of your particular tray now I'll talk a little bit more about it when we get there to do the bottom of this particular tray how we calculate how wide it is and how long it is so right now let's jump down here we'll get marking our rebates out and then Get them cut. Again, when I try to get the entire thickness, I like to use the actual pieces to get our thickness. If you're using one of these style of gauges, as you've seen in the past, you can run it off the edge, let it drop down, lock it off, and it will be the exact thickness of the piece we're looking for. With these pieces, both the sides and the edges are all square to each other, so I don't have a particular reference edge or a face on this, so yeah, you just work out what you want to use if you've done this and you've got it all squared like that. If you do have a reference face or a reference edge, you obviously want to be using them to do your marking off. So it's important when you do this, because we're marking off the end grain, that this end grain is actually square. Otherwise, your gauge line will go off. If you know it's not 100% square and you intend to hand plane the edge of it once you've got the box fitted, you can uh, mark off the edge there, come in with your square and actually mark it that way so you're not taking your reference off a outer square edge. So we want to mark that on our long stretcher because that's where our rebates are going. So we want to mark along here. And then down that third on both sides, on the same side obviously, which is going to be the inside. So you can see it really doesn't take long to quickly wrap a marking gauge line on the edges of these for a rebate. Now we're going to get our thickness or our depth of this rebate, which is six millimeters. So rule this straight up there, lock that down, and that's pretty quick and easy as well. You obviously don't have to lift it if you don't want to, you can just keep it down like this or if you find it easier to reference, you can actually do it like this, but that's going to be harder to see unless you're doing the whole material. That's why I tend to hold it up. It's just that little bit easier. So once again, this process is fairly quick and easy. It's the same process we did in the last video. I will leave that link down below. I'll also link, leave the beginner video where I showed you how to do this down below. We're going to be using the hybrid approach, using a saw and a chisel once again to get these rebates complete. So as always when I do these, I push back against the knife line, forming a little wall in along here. You then come in with some sort of back saw. You want a back saw for this because that's going to keep you much straighter. So that's why I like just a little gent saw like this one. And we want to reference up on that wall and nibble on the front edge first and nibble right across until we've established a saw curve right the way across here. Then I work down on my side first, 
down to the line of this rebate that we've got wrapped around. And we look on the front here, do the same. Because we've got that kerf established across, it should keep us square. And then we just want to work the material down, keep our saw straight. Until we've reached, reached depth. I have some sort of a mallet, whether it's one of these style of the, the nylon heads. Or if it's a wooden mallet like this. Uh, I'll leave the video below if you want to make a wooden mallet like this. And we want to read the grain initially. So we come down two or three millimeters. And we're just trying to give it some light taps. Now, you want to make sure that this is held down so it doesn't move. If it moves a little bit, it's not the end of the world. You could do this in your vise. For simplicity of filming, I'm doing this here a little bit easier. I have a little more room and some more light. So we can see that that is splitting out quite straight. So we can come down and take out a little bit more like this. And we're starting to get down. So now I'm going to go down and come in one millimeter, two millimeters, just above that marking gauge line. And I'm going to work across once again. The important thing is that we don't go below that baseline. Now I can see that I haven't quite cut deep enough, so I am just going to bring my marking knife here. Just cut that wall down a little bit deeper before I get to this next process. Then we come in and we're referencing the chisel in our gauge line. Give that a little push. Move along. Little push. Move along, little push. So now we've referenced right the way along here to get that done. And then we can just come back and clear that out. Now you can see that cutting there made that nice and flat. So all the fibers didn't get stuck. Then we can come in, referencing our chisel flat. And if you leave a little bit there and we're done that's reference nice and square and if we bring our side piece in we can see that we get a nice square even fit there <laughs> So there we go, that's our stretchers ready to go and as you saw again I just did a quick little fitment. The rebates went a little easier this time, sometimes they're a little bit quicker than others. I had pretty good luck with these ones, only had to readjust one of them and I've brought it into the orientation that I'm going to make this tray in and once again numbered them one through four so we always bring it back into this orientation. Now obviously to do the base or the tr bottom of this tray we need to make sure that all our markings are coming off the bottom of the tray to get the correct marking. To further ensure that you always get the correct orientation, you can actually take your box that's laid out in this, set it off to the side somewhere or maybe on the other end of your workbench where it's not in the way, and you can actually just leave it in the correct orientation, take one piece at a time. And that's what I do when I do bigger builds, if you've got the space. It just allows you to make sure you're gonna bring things back exactly how you want them. Obviously the markings are in case you get things out of place, but if you do have the space, especially with something small like this, try and keep it in the orientation it's meant to be in, and then just keep rechecking after each piece. I know it seems a little bit repetitive, but it does prevent mistakes. So in my case, I'm gonna set the box off to the side over here. I'm gonna grab my first stretcher, and I know the bottom is down on here, so my groove is going down here. Because I've got these markings on the top here, I already know that this is where it's going. So we've got to get our groove marked in here. Now, the groove is going to be seven millimeters wide. In this case, I'm going to set it up five or six mil from the edge. 
trying not to blast out the bottom of the groove while you're using your chisel to do this. That's why if you have something like a plow plane, it's going to go much quicker and there's way less chance of you blasting out the bottom of your groove using something like this. And we'll, we'll get to this. This is obviously the beginner videos, so we're just using the very basic tools here. So we're going to come up five or six mil. So we want to get that on one of our marking gauges. When you do this, the only problem is because of the shape of the cutter on these, as I've mentioned before, the flat is here. So when you're actually marking the bottom of your groove, you actually have the back cut on the wrong side. So it does tend to allow the groove to be ever so slightly wider than you want. And that's a good thing even if it's a fraction of a millimeter or one millimeter wider than your material it means your material is not going to get stuck which I've had happen in the past. We are going to be having the depth of this particular groove the same depth as our rebate so that's six millimeters so if you've already got that gauge set don't change that one keep that one aside because we can use that for our depth mark on our side stretches. We don't need to do our depth mark on this one because we already have that we have our rebates on the long side but when it comes to the side ones we will need to mark a little depth for it so you can keep that six mil for that we're going to come in with this gauge i'm going to assume that you've only got the one gauge today so we're going to mark that on all our pieces i'm down on the side of these pieces ready for that depth mark you're worried about the orientation of your boards keep putting them back after you've marked them so now that we've got that set we know what this is we need to then go an additional seven millimeters on top of that or whatever thickness of the base material you're using apparently i went with eight millimeters there it slipped a little bit and i didn't realize because we need to add another seven on top of that pretty straightforward and we once again need to mark that on each one of these while i've got the two side stretches here I'm just going to come in with that 6mm and mark that depth gauge on here. So when we do this, we want a chisel that's going to fit inside that groove. It is better if the chisel, I know I've said in the past, is the exact thickness. Sometimes having your chisel that is the exact size can be detrimental and it can catch and sort of gouge out the side of your groove. So it's up to you. Ideally, just under the size of your groove is perfect, but I know we don't always have chisels the size we want so work with what you've got. Today we're going to be sawing these. These are small enough that we can saw the full length of them so we've got a nice deep gauge line in there and we will bring the chisel in and we'll get started. So let's jump down here and I'll run you through it. So what I've got going on here is I have actually clamped this down using my hold fast on top of another piece of wood. It's just so it elevates so when I come in with the saw it's just a little more comfortable for me than it right down on the bench. So in order to do this, because we're going to be using a saw that is not the length of it, it's shorter, we're going to need to have that wall in there once again to help guide this. So we're going to do this on both sides, and this process goes a little bit quicker than the cross grain because we're going along with the grain here as we push into it, it actually chips the wood out much quicker much easier. You just want to flick it out as you go along. Steep, because you don't want to be blowing this out. So now we've got that all out. We have a ridge on this side and a ridge on that side. So once again, we want to come in at the top end here and start sawing. But it's a little different this time because kind of have to saw this nice and flat along this. So I start it there and then I engage and just start working my way back and forth. So you can see now I've got this going. You can use both hands if you need to. Now this will be easier if you have a longer saw as well. Now you just want to be looking where you're sawing until you've come down so if you see here, I'm still up in the air on this rebate just here. So you keep working that until you're down to the depth of that rebate. 
And once you've started establishing this, it becomes much easier to work with. Now, don't be afraid if you do hit your rebate down this end a little bit at either end. It doesn't matter too much in the long run. For that cut, we want to remove this material here. And that's where a chisel that fits inside here is imperative. Now, as I showed you in the beginner video, if you haven't seen that, I will leave that down below. We want to reference bevel down. Reason being, the bevel causes your chisel to move away like that. It's going to want to try and pull it out so you have more control of removing the material. Now, if we look very closely at my plow plane here, that blade there is held in the exact same orientation for the exact same reasons. When we do this, we start at the far end and we want to lock on the chisel as much as we can, kind of putting a little bit of downforce on it and then still holding the handle in a way that we can push it. So we want to just start little tiny amounts and we so slowly want to work our way back going further back with each stroke reason being is we're going to get down in between this groove and we'll have more control so if you're struggling to reference here you can run flat and then just slowly raise it until it slowly takes shaving and after a while you'll get used to just referencing straight like that without too many issues but if you do need to take a deeper cut it's just as simple as raising the height of your chisel like that and you can see I've hit the edge of this a little bit it's kind of inevitable when you do this with a chisel that you're going to hit the edges so don't worry about that too much try your best to stay inside the sort gauge lines that you've done there now you want to pay attention because you might not have gone right to depth along this edge so if you do find this that it's not coming out, you might need to bring your saw back in like this and just deepen that saw curve a little bit. So I've come through here, you see how I've just hit my rebate here, which I didn't really want to do, but sometimes it happens. Now I know that I'm at depth there. I can use the material in the groove to reference that. And when you get up the far hand here and you end up going off the edge, you want to drop in behind it, still bevel down, and just break that back little bit out like this until you've brought it down enough that you're referencing, and then you can just work the entire groove like so. Sometimes when I do this, I prefer to get this side closest to me down first, because then I've got that flat, and you can bring your chisel in flat like this, and you can see how I've just done that curl, because I've referenced flat through here, I know that's 100% the depth that we're looking for. So it can sometimes make it a little bit easier to reference where you're looking because you know where you're working to. If you do find it's a little difficult to remove the material, back it off so you're not taking such a large piece of wood in one pass. Now right now, I'm looking right through the length here and I don't see any of my saw curve anymore. It looks like we've referenced flat down here. Now to check flat at this edge, you can obviously do what we did at the other end. Bring your chisel in flat. Let it go as far as it can. And as you can see here, I'm running through here nice and freely now. It's useful when you do this to just have a little off cut of your piece of plywood. And you can then bring that in to see if it's gonna fit inside your groove to see if it's actually wide enough. Now it looks like this is gonna be a little tight here, but I'll show you another way that if you've done your grooves and it doesn't fit, you don't need to widen your groove piece. You can actually adjust your base piece, even if it's plywood. You can adjust that with a hand plane if you want. You can do that on the bottom, or you can use a bit of sandpaper to adjust it. So when we get there, I'll show you how we can do that. But if you're getting your groove the correct width, theoretically, this piece should fit there. And if we look up this top edge here, it does actually fit up here. Now it's a bit bit of a tight fit, which is what we're looking for in this case. However, we will want to loosen this up a little bit so we can actually feed it in easier. Right now, I'm going to jump back down here. We're going to run through getting the grooves done on all of these others. So sit back and I'll be back to you once the grooves are complete. <music> Thank you. 
I did have to refine the side of those grooves a couple of times with the wider chisel. One time towards the end there I actually caught it and I just had to chop it to stop it wanting to split the shoulder of the groove off there. Other than that it's a pretty straightforward process as you can see there and it doesn't take too long but it does take a little bit of skill and a little bit of time to get used to running your chisel on its bevel there and not catching the sides. One thing to note before we move on is that down here that our grooves of our long and short stretches do actually match exactly as we wanted them to and that's important otherwise we're not going to get the base to actually fit inside here so we do want to make sure that they do fit and because we had them all squared and dimensioned our pieces prior to it and we took the same reference edge with our marking gauges there's a very very high chance that they would align and they do so we've obviously got to calculate the dimensions of the bottom of this tray. Now when it comes to the width, because our groove was the same depth as the rebate, we can actually just use these short side pieces, measure that straight out, and that is the width of our piece right there. Which, these end up being 149 mil. I was heading for 150, but they're 149 mil. Now with the long stretcher we obviously have this internal measurement which we can take quite easily, but then we've got to have another 6mm here and another 6mm down this end. Now since these stretches are 300mm long the easiest way to do it is because we've only gone in a third on these 18mm pieces we have 12mm left at each end so that is 24mm. So if we take 24mm off 300 we end up with 276 which will be the exact length we want. At the end of the day our measurements are probably not going to be exactly that once we actually work on our fit to actually get it to fit together because we'll end up using the shooting plane and the shooting board to actually take a little bit more material off so it's a little bit narrower than that exact measurement but that's the exact measurement that we're going to cut and then we'll work that fit down until it fits perfectly. T6 then I need to measure across here for 149 so that gets us here now in this section I need to go up here to 149 right up at this end just so we can get a ruler on it to put a line between it so we line up to the dash there line up to the dash there and we run our line right through past where our measurement is here for our length and then since that's narrow enough we can bring our square in off this side which is actually the factory edge. Always want to be using a cross cut saw when cutting plywood because there's always some cross grain that you've got to deal with and you don't want to be splitting that cross grain. Particularly with a piece of plywood like this that's got a very very thin veneer of about one millimeter or less you just want to use that cross cut saw to actually get that done. So just like in the last video, I'm going to use the Ryoba saw. I'm going to use the cross-cut teeth on that because they really work well for cross-cutting plywood. There's a very high count of teeth. I'm not sure how many teeth are actually there, but because there's a lot of fine teeth and they're super sharp, it actually does a really good job. So let's get to chopping this. Just like last time, or as I usually do here, I've hung my plywood off the edge of my workbench so I can saw. It's sitting about an inch out, as I usually do. And then I've just got it held down with my hold fast here to stop it moving. So we're going to come up and we're going to saw off that line. So I'm staying a few millimetres off it. Of 
vibrate a little bit, so I'm trying to just ease off on how aggressive I'm going. So it's very aggressive like that, so I'm just tipping it for less aggressive. Until I'm right up on this line here. And then vertical so I can cut it out without damaging the plywood that's left behind. So what I do, I'm going to square the two ends first. Just want to square this edge. So we now have this to the exact dimensions as what we wanted with that box. Now, because I know it doesn't fit, we're going to do a little bit of work just on the bottom of this bit of plywood before we even attempt to put it in there to see if the dimensions are correct. Because if it won't fit in the slot or in our groove, we obviously can't check to see if it fits. So we know we only need to take a very small amount. We're only dealing with this 6mm gap along here. Now get your hand plane like this. And hopefully your blade is retracted. And you're just going to advance it until it starts taking a very fine shaving. And I don't know if you can see this, but it's just taking a little bit of that veneer off. Keep working it in the direction it's going to go on until you can actually get that to fit. Now for me, that is sort of fitting, but it's quite a tight fit, so I want to take a little bit more off. And now, that's fitting for me. So you can see, you don't need to take a lot off, just enough that's going to fit there. Now, I'm going to go ahead and do this to the whole piece. You obviously want to do the end grain first, so you clean up any chipping when you come the other way. Other side piece to get this to work, because you want it to fit to the piece you're actually putting in there. And that fits nicely too. If you make a few discrepancies in your grooves, that's how you can fix it up to get your plywood to fit. Now obviously, you'd like to get it the thickness straight off so you don't have to do that and you can just slot your plywood straight in. Obviously for me that didn't happen so this is a workaround that I've used before that does fit and that's how I like to pillow panels when you're making pillow uh, panel doors or even the bottom of a box or a drawer when you're actually using a solid piece of wood. Which if you have a look at my traditional tool chest build. I actually did that there, so I'll leave that link down below if you want to check that out. The way I like to fit these, and you can check if it is too wide by just pushing this piece on. If your two end pieces have any material overhanging, this is not going to come together. So we can already see here, there's a little bit overhanging here. Fine at this end, but it's not fine at this end, so we're going to put it back on and just shoot a little bit more material off here first. But we wanted to take it off down this end, so clear all the material off your shooting board, and you just want to work So we're not going all the way through, we're just working this edge here. And now it is in that end piece, it's not overhanging anymore. We'll put this one back on, no overhang. So now we've got to try and get this piece to fit. So I like to bring it up like this and slide it in. And see how well that goes together. Let me push that on there, and then I like to bring the other, the last side in, and we'll try the same. And so, if we look at this, we can see that this is actually coming together pretty good, and I'm not so sure we need to do any more adjustment on this. As I pull it together, it does pop a little bit, so one of these long stretches here, I'm just going to shave a little bit more off. Off that side, and now we'll go ahead and put it back together again. And if I look nice and closely at this, we've got some nice tight rebates here. 
we will be able to pull that bottom edge together when we actually bring that together and attach it. Got a little bit of play where it's just wobbling, but it will come together when we push some clamps onto this. We'll be able to pull it all together nice and tight. So that's how you fit one of these captive bottoms into something like a tray or a drawer. Now let's go ahead and we'll whack this together. For this, decided that we'll use some screws to hold this one together. No particular reason, just I think screws are going to hold it a little bit better. Just like in the last video, we're going to come together with a clamp. We're going to try and get the clamp right in the middle here. Pull that together. And I'm clamping from opposing sides, so the thread's on this side on this one. And on this side, it'll be on the opposite side. Just to ensure this is going to come together the way we want. We can go ahead and actually start attaching this. Now, you could use glue if you wanted to. If you glue this, don't use glue on the groove. It's not necessary to do that. So because we've rebated this in, we obviously need to bring our screws in from the side. So in order to do that, what I'm going to do is just bring it down. So I've brought it just down low enough so I can get my drill in here to drill some holes. When you're attaching this, you want to make sure you miss where that groove is sitting in here. So we know it's about here, so we want to come in just above that. And I'm going to pre-drill one, two. So you can see I've pre-drilled the two holes here. You want to come in and countersink them. Today, I'm just going to be using these little black screws. They're going to come through just enough to hold it. A longer screw would be better. I just want to use these just for the aesthetic look. Uh, if I had longer ones, I would, but these will hold this together. Just make sure you get screws that are long enough to hold your frame together. When it comes to screwing these together, you can either just use a screwdriver or you can use a driver bit. For this I'm just going to use a screwdriver as a driver bit is not really needed. It's got to be one screw that doesn't want to start properly for you. I'm going to go ahead and screw the back ones in first. So we can release this clamp and get it out of the way. tray complete. Now you can go ahead and face plan the top of this if you need to, remove your numbers with the hand plane if that's what you want to do, but that is the complete tray. And as you can see we ended up with a pretty good looking tray here. Obviously you can put finish on it, whatever finish you like. I quite often don't finish things that just sit around in the workshop, but if you want to practice doing your shellac finishing or French polish or something, these little tray projects are a good way to do that and improve your skills. You can see that oh, I've just gone, I went with the black screws as a little bit of a contrast to the pine and that it's still not particularly difficult although it is a little more time consuming than just nailing obviously the base straight onto the tray. So there you have it folks. That's how simple it is to actually do a basic tray using rebates and then a captive groove to hold the base. Now obviously I had a few issues with the width of the, the uh, groove that I put in there, but you can see it wasn't that difficult to work on the base to counteract it for it, it to actually fit. And if you were using real timber, that would be how you would pillow the bottom of it for it to fit. So if you like this video and you'd like to support me, please consider liking and subscribing down below. Don't forget to comment while you're down there. Let me know how your trays are going and your basic joints are going. And 
while you're down there, if you'd like to support me a little bit further, please consider giving the video a super thanks if you got some value out of it, or checking me out on Patreon. If you'd like to see another tray video like this particular one, I'll leave the video up there where I made this basic one with just the rebates where the bottom of the tray is just nailed on. And I'll also leave the beginner playlist up here that this video is part of. Bye for now.